Ladies and gentlemen, I'm to hear more. Okay. I'm Patrick Cloud. And this is another episode of Damn Internet. You scary. Hola. We got a, we got a, hola. Uh, Come estas? Me bien, y tu? That's where I fall apart, though. <laughs> Nigga, answer that. I, I, Say your I, name. Me amo, go ahead. <laughs> Me amo, Pat. Patricio. Si. Mi amo, Roberto Moore. Y, y tú, y ustedes. <laughs> this is it's just bad. It, it went from bad to worse. Go to me. Uh, and ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we got a very special guest, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Sidney Castillo. ¿Cómo estás? Hola, Sidney. Gracias por todos allá. Es un yala, es un trabajando aquí, es un blanco, es un blanco. Tunet, tres yeah. negros. Yeah, negros, negros. Y, y, amigos, y, amigos, amigos. Yeah, all, all, all amigos. todos amigos, todos. Yeah, es un Kevin stage, hello, we're here. Muy bien, muy bien. Yeah. Cuatro kilos of la cocaína. Ay, sí, no sé cómo es un marihuana, güey. so fucking bad. I, went, I, I fucking watch a lot of narcos. <laughs> Wait, so, 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 I know I say so, we're the drugs. So you, so you did not wait. You didn't learn Spanish because you you have a Spanish family. You l learned it at restaurants, restaurants, and in school. I flunked Spanish my freshman year. True story. Miss Baye, she she thought I was one. So listen, and like I guess Mexican culture, some people I guess ashamed to be Mexican, so mm -hmm. they thought it was me. If I was some American ashamed to like speak Spanish, so she was like, hey, Castillo, apidos Castillo, so comprende español. Right, it's simple. Your last name is Castillo, so you understand Spanish. Mm. And I was a ninth grade. I said, no, 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 no. I don't. It's just that. She goes, but you understand what I just said. I said, that was basic. She's, yeah. So she only spoke to me in Spanish in the class. Ooh. Like She thought I was like and a shame. Forced, and forced you to like pick so it I up. Failed. <laughs> I, I, I failed. I failed. And she's so like, you're, not, a, she's like, you're not applying yourself. I was like, no, you're not listening. <laughs> I don't speak the shit. I haven't understood you all year. Dog. I was dog. Listen, Nick. You're not listening, dog. She made me so hey, mad. Sydney gets mad so fast. Even it when he's playing. That makes sense. He slammed the table. I clutched my pearls. My booty cheek went like this real quick. I was like, ah, I shut up. He ain't never hit me. And I still was like. But she thought she was doing something powerful like the beginning of some movie. Yes. Dog. But he failed. <laughs> he just didn't Dog. understand all year. The last quiz. <laughs> <laughs> that, was that was good. That was good. That was good. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have an amazing writer, creator, director, producer, comedian. This brother is. I mean, his. I, I can't imagine what your your list of projects that you Stats. like helped out. If you guys are, you know, subscribe to Kevo Stage Studios app. He is also one of the lead writers on Churchy. Uh, the lead writer, I was, I would say, like he had his finger and everything. Sydney say... getting all the checks, <laughs> all the checks. He walked in, wilding out sweats, <laughs> HBO hoodie. <laughs> got it. He got, he got a car. He got to deal with Lyft right now. He get free lifts everywhere. Sydney, let me tell you something about this motherfucker, Sydney. Sydney, Sydney told me that he put me down as his emergency contact. James calls me from Sydney's phone and says Sydney then broke his leg oh, yeah. on a lift scooter. What? I'm freaking out. Like, first of all, why am I his emergency contact? I was about to ask. What this is weird. We what about to hear says urgent? I, we ain't. <laughs> I, 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 Sydney has been inside. I don't think he even been inside. We stayed in the same complex and never been inside each other's house. We used to just walk to the to the grocery store together like what old the, men. Oh, some old man shit. Meet me by the pool. <laughs> Y'all never go, went to each other's house. Never went to each other's house. <laughs> lived, literally lived just like seven blocks, seven doors away from each Meet other. Meet me by the pool. <laughs> and this motherfucker had me down for his emergency contact. Contact. Let me tell you, I'm freaking out because I called this phone, nobody's answering. The shit goes on for a couple of hours. I'm reaching out to other people. Yo, I talk to City. He broke his leg. He put me down to his emergency contact. I'm taking my job serious. I call his phone again. It's about an hour and a half later. City answers. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, are you okay? What, 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 what medicine did they give you? What, what, what emergency room are you at? You, want, you need me to come get you? He's like, oh, man, we, we was just playing. We was high. Yeah, it was hard. Oh, you. but you didn't tell him you was uh, playing? No, I'll be forgetting if I'm in the mood, like to play. And sometimes I'm like, I'm just playing. But we had smoked. And I was like, I forgot. So and Jay's wait. like, what are we doing? I was like, just call him to my leg, bro. Why? It'll be funny. Just say he's my emergency contact. <laughs> On and, a scooter? And just go. We just make it up as you go. That's the fun. <laughs> but you're supposed to tell him. The hey, other I, funny part is that Tahir didn't really do that until an hour and a half later. Yeah, he's like, so, no, no, Sydney, I'm actually on my Patreon right now. I can't do it. I kept, I kept Sydney. calling, but he wasn't answering the yeah, phone. Yeah, yeah, they calling. intentionally didn't answer the phone. It's so I was calling up. for like an hour. You guys just, are destructive. Picture high. smoking and be like, he's calling. <laughs> Yo, you guys did that though. <laughs> How you gonna ghost him like, 
oh, to hear again. Like, y'all did that. Bro, they're, they're horrible people, that bro. That is funny. Hey, dog, can I tell a quick story? Please. I always used to wait tables at BJ's and Burbank, right? Uh-huh. So I always did pranks on people. That's actually my first shows on Hollywood was prank shows. That's mm-hmm. all I did. But I'm at BJ's restaurant in Burbank, dog. His manager named Lance. Why do you always mess with us? So I, I want to know what time I had to be in at work. Mm-hmm. So I called him at like 3 o'clock. The restaurant said, it must be to... Uh, I speak to Lance. They go, hey, this is Lance, the manager. I said, how you doing? My name is uh, Officer Wojciechowski. I'm um, Sidney Castillo's parole officer. I said, I know he's in California under this new thing of being an actor. Uh, Sidney fled from us. He's a very dangerous person. I said, he comes off like he's just uh, from This Texas. is your manager? No, no, it's my manager at BJ's Rush. I swear to God. I said, he's very dangerous if he feels cornered. I said, he said, do not, do not make him feel cornered. He said, okay, I'm coming down there to pick up Sidney at 5 o'clock. What time is he doing at work? Uh, uh, 4.30. Hey, he's really a nice guy. Do not make him feel cornered. I hung up the phone. When I got to work, dog, I got to work at 4.15. If you go into BJ's in the back, in the back, they had the, they had all the managers there. You was playing with your job. Dog, dog they had all the managers there. This could have went bad. He goes, Sydney, how you doing? I said, what's up, Lance? <laughs> and all, all the managers start talking. Can we talk to you for a second? I literally said, hey, I feel cornered right now. <laughs> <laughs> Dog, this white man turned red. He said, "You're not cornered. I need you to know you're not cornered, and we love you. We're here because we love not you." Cornered. I said, "What you mean you love me?" He was like, "Your parole officer called." I said, "I ain't got one of those." He goes, "Sydney, we know everything." I said, "No, nah, I'm fucking with you, Lance. I called you early. I was a parole officer." He said, "Sydney, no, you didn't. I talked to her. I said, you talked to her, Officer Wolj. I did the voice from Officer Wojciechowski. He said, "You were fucking." Her. And he got so mad, he walked off. And like the head of like BJ's, one of the top five people was there. She was like, Sydney, that was fucking funny. <laughs> <laughs> she goes, the way you got Lance, oh, because he said, uh, I was like, I could have been fired on the spot. You could have been fired said, on the spot. Fuck, fuck Yo, it, if we go the with... head of B- BJ was there. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Is that JB? JB Black Boy. They literally like, this nigga really committed to this break. Hey, Yo, kudos, man. That was that, that was, was one. Of, great, but that's also, ballsy as hell. You're it's regular. fun, dog. Nobody's working at BJ's. That's how you know he didn't give a damn about that job. For like just just for shits and giggles. That means that was your job at the time, yeah. and you were that reckless with your actual job. They probably told everybody in their life. That oh story. my god, you <laughs> know that man. They were like all the something managers. exciting happened at BJ's today. <laughs> best worst years. Where location has something to say. <laughs> oh, best worst years of your life is when you wait tables. Oh, because you know you're gonna get out of it. Yeah. You're living your dream now. But mm-hmm. well, back in the day, it's when you're grinding. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? We used to be in the bathroom praying, like, Lord, I got to get out of here. That People was... keep asking me about tea. I'm funny. <laughs> <laughs> People keep asking me about tea. That's so specific. I'm, I'm funny. <laughs> you know we don't have raspberry tea, but I'm a short eight. Yo. <laughs> I, 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 I have so many questions. I know Pat probably has some stuff, but I have so many questions Yo, go ahead. that I want to ask you, man. First of all, I consider you a very good friend of mine. Sure. I think I love that. You. Uh, anytime I have a project, I always think you first because you are just so comfortable being you, so authentic, so funny. I mean, just creative, original, all of that shit. And, you know, we're kind of all in the same class, but you just have a kind of fatherly aura about you. You're not afraid to help people out, but I also love the fact that you're not afraid to ask for help. When we were going through the pandemic, you was like, Tier, what do I need to get? Lights, cameras, like, tell me everything. I don't know anything. <laughs> and a lot of times you get people home. that are like, <laughs> that have surpassed you or they, they may have Lights. been higher than you when you started. They don't want to humble themselves and ask for help. Sydney had no problem asking for help. And I always admire that because the moment that you stop learning is the moment you become obsolete. And he is not someone that will ever stop learning. He is just, he's on it. And you would not know all the stuff that he's done because he doesn't carry himself with that type of verbato. Verbato. Verbato? Verbato. 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 There it is. We got the I was point. doing so well, bro. Yeah, you're, in my a, you're a Patreon. So They're like, close. we love him. Yeah. <laughs> we love, we <laughs> Take here. Your time, baby. We here. Take, Take your, your time. Take your time. We, we know say, what you was trying to say. Hey, man, we know what you was trying to say. The holidays are coming up. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people get seasonal depression. Sometimes mm-hmm. people can't go home to see their family when they're out here. All of that type of stuff. How do you do? De- I mean, you're in a different, different bracket, different uh, level where you're able to do the stuff that you really want to do. But like before you did that, how were you able to deal with the stress, the anxiety, mm-hmm. possibly the depression? Like especially with the holidays coming up, what did you do to relax? Because a lot of people may not know, but you've been, like had a trying last couple of the last yeah, couple of about years. Five years. Uh, hmm. 
when I was younger, you know what I mean? I used to like, if I couldn't go home, like this is a true story. I couldn't go home my first Christmas ever. I couldn't go home to Fort Worth, right? I got fired my first job out here. It was on the border because I told him, I said, hey, I just moved here. I said, but Christmas coming up, so I'm going to go home. Mm -hmm. He said, oh, no, I have you on the schedule. I said, no, 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 no. I'm not from here. I'm from Fort Worth. <laughs> so it's Chris Christmas. He said, yeah, I know, but I got you on the schedule. And I was like, okay. So they called me on Christmas Eve, like, where you at? I said, I'm in Texas. <laughs> and they were like, but we told you on schedule. I said, but I told you I was going home. <laughs> I ain't changed, bro. I was like this at 23, 24 years old. And when I came back to work, yeah. I came back to work like that after the new year, like on the 5th. You said that, that job? <laughs> yeah, same job. I oh. was like, it was some, my name on the schedule. And he said, Sydney, you're fired. I said, because I went home? <laughs> so they didn't send you nothing? No, they just let you go. He's like, this nigga's fired. But <laughs> I, I used to cook for people. I used to like, if, if, I used to like that's how me and Fool, like a lot of comics in Bourbon, whenever like nobody had nowhere to go, I like to cook. So I'll just tell everybody to come through and get a plate and we'll do like some game nights because it's like I knew... Everybody financially couldn't go back to where they was from. Right. So it's just like I was raised by an old man. You feel me? My dad died in 2011. He was 78 when he died in 2011. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's, he was in the 60s. You know what I mean? Yeah. In my young days. So it's just like raised to like on some Texas shit, just like look out for people. Yeah. Because when I was younger, like in comedy, people looked out for like Chris Spencer used to give me all his old clothes. Mm -hmm. When he get a big bunch of bag, get a big money, they'll sit in. I said, okay, cool. I get some shoes. I'm like 23, 24. And you just learn, it's like my blessing ain't gonna never stop from helping somebody. Yeah. So it's like knowledge is power. So if I got the knowledge and I look around in the position I'm in, don't have a lot of black people, I'm real amped to be like, yo, here's some information how to get in these rooms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like when the pandemic happened, literally, I was like, okay, I don't know how to do the internet, mm -hmm. right? I know I just go be funny. I hit this nigga, what do I need? He said, he said, your whole setup. He was like, you need a camera that's good, you know, specifically for the, you need these lights. What are the lights? You can get them from Amazon. Can you just take, tell me what they are? <laughs> he sent me a picture of the lights. I looked up an M50 camera from this black lady on YouTube. I spent like $1,000, like Damn. in a day. And not the flicks, but mm. to, nobody going, if, if we doing this, mm -hmm. that's my old man and my dad, and we going to get the gear. Yeah. So then I had all this <laughs> shit, bought the computer, everything. Mm. Couldn't get it. To, I didn't know how to work nothing. Yeah. The camera was foggy. And then taught myself, all right, bet. So now I'm knowledgeable enough to get it started. Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? I mm -hmm. still rely on people, but you got to like, you know, Help people out just because I feel like that's yeah. how you get blessed. Yeah, that's what's up, man. I, I remember this dude in the beginning. This dude years ago came to me. He's like, "Hey, Sydney, I just I got something I want you to look at. I know it's your time. I'm using your time." I'm like, "Dear, what's up? What do you want to eat?" I was like, "Huh? I want you to look at something, but I value your time. What do you want to eat?" And I was like, "I'll take some Taco Bell. Taco Bell. That's it. You want a side a drink?" I was like, "Just some couple tacos, man. I'll be right back." And then, like, gave me some tacos to watch his stuff and give him notes. I always remember that. I was like, this nigga is cool. Like, he, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's tacos, but he just appreciated the time. I, I like, do, right. man. I mean, even back then, I didn't I didn't understand it <clears throat> as much then as I do now. But, like, your time is your, your most valuable asset. Because you can always get more money, get more cars, more houses, right. more clothes, yeah. all of that. But you get no more time. So if somebody's taking time out of their, their day or whatever, their schedule, to like help you out with something, I just always want them to know I appreciate it. And if all I can afford is a gesture like some tacos, and getting you getting these goddamn tacos. You want some? You and want dog, some sour cream on that bitch? Up. And look, I remember that ten years later. Yeah. About my like, dog. Some tacos. Dog. Yeah. You remember what the, you ordered? Uh, probably a gordita, probably. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't nothing crazy. No, yeah. <laughs> Mount Lou Blast. You know, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> a little Baja. A little Baja Blast. Blast. It's a little Baja. Baja. I just saw that the, the recipe for Baja Blast is the blue Gatorade and regular Mountain Dew. What do you mean the blue Gatorade? Like the that blue, blue the Gatorade, blue. like the ice blue one. It's Powerade. No, it's it's, it's, it's Gatorade? Gatorade. No, it's like the it's the it's the it's the Gatorade. Like and they the, actually makes the, the Gatorade. Silver. Yeah. Me, me and all your Patreon listen like Ben. Say less. I saw I the video. I have some Baja Blast tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody did it on, on uh, IG. Or was a TikTok video or something like that. I just watched. I was like, <gasps> no. And Is then that I because to taste Mountain Dew and Gatorade are owned by the same people? I don't know. I just that's just what they I didn't know you could just use something else. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta get Taco Bell shut down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, say again. Say it again. Sierra Mist is just sprite hey, and uh, uh, ginger. <laughs> what they been doing? Oh man. Man, man. man. a cease and a motherfucking just, desist letter. <laughs> just use another product. <laughs> it's kind of weird. That's a good. That's a good. That's a good thought, though. I mean, they do own like Pepsi owns all of that shit, so right. you know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be far fetched. So quite possibly, but very, very possible. What we got? What we working with today, Pat? Oh, I was, I was, I was like in the Sydney question. Oh well, shit! I mean, I got a thousand of. Them. I'll go. I like to talk. Okay. Um, Not really, but the people I care about. <laughs> 
Um, it was something else. Okay, so you pivoted from not knowing how to do the camera stuff to getting the equipment, starting gaming. You were doing the uh the, the goddamn me karaoke. Yeah, has a good time live on hey, IG. Hey, that was so much fun, dog. It was a lot of fun. I got in so flagged. much trouble. I didn't know they flagged every video I put up and banned me for so many days. Oh, yeah. and I was like, I'm new to it. Like, why y'all bullying me? <laughs> He said so many days. I was banned so many days. We're like, I try to go live. If you've never been banned so on live, that's how you find out you're banned. It looks like a picture, and then it just frames on, it freezes on your ass. Like, yeah. no, nigga. Right? Yeah. <laughs> With a little note, Damn. like, you didn't done something. They don't even give you the heads up. No, dog. So you was like probably all ready to go live. And dog, shit. and it was like freeze frame, and I was like, well, we can't do this today. But freeze that was frame. Fun. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. It was like, a lot of that fun. That was a lot of fun. My mama still remember that. Her memory kind of like going sometimes. Mm. But one thing she remembers, she'd be like, during the pandemic, y'all used to sing Burpee. You know, Burpee come in. He used to sing, and y'all just had <laughs> such a good time. I was like, yeah. yeah. He's like, you should bring it back. And here's why I didn't, right? Because a my Patience is thin. Yes. And if I ask two niggas to do it and they be like, eh, I don't know if I'm fucking with tonight, I'd be like, oh, I'll just shut this whole shit down. Yeah. Like, 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 <laughs> I'm not going to be begging nobody to sing. Nigga, I, <laughs> I, 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 I had down. a Rolodex of people for Zoom with the homies. I, had, I would just do the go through, yeah. go through, go through. Cause that shit was tiring. It's, it's, it's tiring. And me, I had people on my homegirl, you know, top notch. I love top yeah. notch. And Atlanta, I recently talked to her. I said, I was, she said, You want to follow me? I said, I asked you to do karaoke. <laughs> She goes, Sydney, Sydney, I, you I, I, I got busy. I said, I understand, so I asked you again. And you said, yeah, and then you didn't call me back. I said, so I was. I took that as a shot. And she was like, you petty ass. You I'm too like, old for that. I'm going to follow you back. But, but top notch, I, not, I didn't like it. That is funny as hell. You flipped that into, and this is jumping far ahead, but you flipped that to an online writing course. Oh, yeah, like, uh, so, man. Here's the thing. And, and again, I, I I jump past because you you've done so much in between when that started and in the IG karaoke, but like just to show the evolution of somebody that didn't know how to do anything online when it right. came to streaming to now you're hosting That's crazy. a weekend writer yeah. course. Yeah, it's like so boom. My partner back home, Chris, was like, you should teach writing. I was like, I don't like talking to people like that. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean that in a negative way. Right, right, right. It's just like, you know what I mean? My wall is up just because of whatever reasons. And so it's like, he said, you should do it. And then he said, this is what got me. He said, Don Sydney, do it, record it, and you can sell the uh, the class itself. Mm -hmm. So that's what I do. I did the class here. right? I had like oh, it's not fit, live? Fit, no, 15 students. It's like a two-hour course. And I had like a couple speakers, a showrunner. I had the head writer for the game, the game theory show I'm on speak and like we went over like different ways to write for like a while and out or non-scripted shows how to have your packet together mm -hmm. and like it was really intense like okay cool and after i was done i was like boom then people hit me up like yo do you still do that course i send them the link and they watch the link and then i you know i pay it's per zoom session mm -hmm. like, I'll, you know see what you for one price for a zoom make sure you got it for three zoom sessions to make sure you know and then it just the it's like residual income yes wow and all i gotta do is really the people who are gonna pay the price the people that really want to do it right yeah you feel me so so you you sold the video and then you sold the zoom so yeah that day session. so it's like 12 people paid for the session boom then after uh -huh. i was done i took that link that course you know what i mean chopped it down edited to like you know maybe two hours right mm -hmm. and now when people ask do you do the late night writing course mm -hmm. i send them that and they watch it for two hours it's notes in there it's all because you know really detailed uh -huh. and then is Zoom sessions calling me and we go over your work because I give you homework in the class. Oh, and then we go over it. like your pitches. This one dude, he's so passionate about it, I don't even charge him no more. And don't this don't go for everybody. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say that. <laughs> I don't charge don't him. Hard disclaimer. Yeah, just him specifically because I know he be like at work and then he'll get off work and Zoom me of all these pitches. Mm -hmm. And at first they weren't the best. Mm -hmm. Then they got the, you know a little better. I've been working so long now. I'm like, that's a good pitch for TV. That, like he getting it now. Yeah. yeah, it's taking him seven zooms. Hey, but it don't matter. It don't now, matter. He's now getting it. His hungriness is like, I fuck with you being hungry. Yeah. yeah. You know now what I mean? let me ask you, that's what's dope. what's more rewarding, like a person, you know, running up the bag or actually learning what you taught because it's something that was in here. You were able to verbalize it yeah. and 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 teach it or present it in such a way that it was able to be absorbed and learned from. Yeah, that's dope. Like, the money, initially, it's like, okay, cool. Not to be funny, but we all make money now. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, I don't necessarily am in a position where, like, that 300, I'm like, man, I need you to do it. Yeah. But if you do it and, like, you understand it, mm -hmm. it's a certain, like, great, like, damn, like, all right, cool. 
how they can take that. And I hope they literally hope they get hired. Right? Yeah. Because then it's like they'll tell somebody else. And I'll, maybe they'll teach somebody else. Mm-hmm. Right. But, dog, when I first got my – I've been doing writing since 2014. So, excuse me, 2008. Damn, I'm dumb. 2008. <laughs> But my first multicam job was 2018, where I'm in like a sitcom room. Mm-hmm. And Craig Wayans, like my big bro, like helped me out so much. Like, as I didn't know, look, dog, I didn't know scene numbers. Mm. Like, I was like, why is it so many? And he was like, <laughs> dog, well, I've never changed, dog. The showrunner in Chris Moynihan, right? He had a deal with NBC, all this jazz. I remember punching up the pilot. I was mm-hmm. there, but I didn't get the first season job. I punched <clears> up the pilot. <throat> it was a joke. It was like, Obama, what about the girl you dated who thought Obama was a reptilian shapeshifter? And that was Brisha Webb's line. Mm-hmm. And I remember the pilot, I was like, that ain't hidden for me. Right. And I was like, come here, say this. I'm all out of pocket. You're supposed mm-hmm. to go through the executive <laughs> producer. I'm just on some, I'm a comedian, come here. She did a joke, it hit, and he was like, who gave you that? She was like, Sydney. And they was like, come here. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, okay, bet. Now, cut to, I'm at the job. Mm-hmm. And they try that joke again. And, I, and the showroom's like, we're going to do the joke we did in the first season. I said, oh, no, 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 no. It's like my first day. I said, no, no, I remember that joke didn't hit. Mm-hmm. And he goes, yeah, well, sometimes if it doesn't hit, we kind of like put it back in the script just to see. Mm-hmm. I said, no, you ain't got to do that. I said, that's why I'm here. I said, <laughs> I talk said, your shit, man. I dog, dog. Talk your shit, man. The whole time Craig is kneeing me, like in my knee, like shut the fuck up. But I, I think he like, go, go. You yeah, know yeah, 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 yeah. I, I was go, like, go, I got go. jokes on me. That's my job. I always had some options on you. Right. So we can, I can pitch right now to that. Right. He's like, well, this is a joke I wrote, Sydney. I said, no, I, I understand that. <laughs> <laughs> And it was like, Craig set me down like, nigga, do not you talk have to, learn to the play show the game. And I was like, I got taught. Like, okay, bet. To this day, Chris Moynihan wants to read everything I got, wants to punch. Like, really? fuck, fuck with me. But how'd he that go like, that first time? That first time, he didn't know how to take me. But he said, see, I want you to sit right here. So every day, I sit right next to the showrunner. That's and he would, like, give it. me shit in a friendly way. Yeah. But I realized what it was. And I was like, okay, bet. I was out of pocket. But it was like a raw dude from Ant One that just know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had to yeah. learn, yeah. really learn that shit. You gotta learn the politics of that shit. Yeah. All that shit, like every world has its own set of of rules. You were blessed enough to get in a room where someone wasn't necessarily threatened by you or offended by what you did. Yeah. Cause that could go way wrong. Like oh, yeah. I've I've been I've been on sets where they I tried to like add a little something to to the lines and they was like, bring it back. <laughs> and I tried again in a different way. Stop. Here's the and most I, important thing is the actor you need to learn. This is what I learned in working on sitcoms. When you book the job, you have a table read first. Mm -hmm. That is when you actually book your job. Mm -hmm. Don't get excited about them calling you booked. If you fuck up the table read, because they literally, we sit there with 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 the script and we circle what don't work. Mm -hmm. And we check what joke work. So if your line is, Patrick, is to do this line, two lines, Mm -hmm. but it's supposed to be a laugh right there. If you deliver it where it ain't funny, you fired. Mm. They just literally come back to the room and be like, we're gonna let Patrick go. We're gonna find somebody else. Just because, like, boom, like right there. That's when. That's when they don't, don't change up the words. If it's like a uh, in sitcom a lot, don't don't yeah. you read it like for them. You know, and then, it the and right those way. writers are in there too, and they yeah. get offended if you yeah. switch up their words because these. They, and that's, they, yeah, they that's probably, their art, dog. And and when you don't know that you're like, man, I'm just trying to do my thing. But I remember, you know, I knew I wouldn't come back to the CBS show. Right, it was a cool show, <laughs> dog. I just it's me, dog. Patrick, I, I need therapy. I'm in it now. <laughs> but he was going around shooting everybody' idea down, like bow, bow. And sometimes they like football coaches. <coughs> mm-hmm. They be in there talking to you crazy, mm-hmm. and because the money good, people mm-hmm. take it. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> what's I, like crazy? Talking to you crazy, like your tone. Yeah. Like, pitch something, just anything. Just pitch something. Say this water uh, bottle. So it's a story about a water bottle who falls in love, and then no, Patrick. Damn it. If, listen, no. Everybody listen, no. And, and people be like, Damn. like he said, I need y'all to pitch me an animal. He said, I need, I, I need y'all to pitch me an animal that's not a dog or a cat, something out the box. So somebody said. Skunk. No. Skunk, no. <laughs> what, what you want? That's how he said it. And so <laughs> they, everybody reserve. Somebody said something else. Reserve. <laughs> I said, uh, what about a um, ferret? He goes, a ferret? No. Why would somebody have a ferret? Right? White man, right? So the way he said it, I was like, mm, jarred. Right. right? <laughs> ah, jarred. Right? And so he goes, what about a rat? And everybody in there is like, yeah, rat's a good idea. But they, you know, as yeah. a showrunner, yeah. I said, no, it's not a good idea. <laughs> hey, dog, when I said that, 
You know how you step out there, you're like, well, I'm here, baby. Right, 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 right. right. <laughs> there ain't no going I mean, back now. I said, yeah, that's not a good idea. I said, you just shot down everybody else in the room and you just mentioned a rat. Mm -hmm. He goes, well, maybe it's a cultural thing. What oh, you mean? I, exactly. I said, what you mean by that? I said, cultural thing. I said, no, it's a rodent thing. It's a nasty thing. Don't nobody have rats in their house for rodents. Ain't no way you have a pet rat. The only way you have a rat is if you have a snake, because snakes eat rats. Rats are for food mm. if you have a snake. But don't nobody run around with a rat. And he goes, okay, no worries. Uh, you okay? We have to put rat. Let's just take a quick five. Oh, you fired. He says, so goodbye. This nigga ain't coming back after that five. The black woman in there, the writer, I love her to death. She said, baby, come here. <laughs> I love me some Sydney. She said, because Sydney going to say what's on his mind. I, I love Sydney. Now, you get said, she said, you know, you couldn't let that one ride. I said, I couldn't. Uh, two weeks later, I'm at the time I was married, right, yeah. my ex-wife sitting right there. I get a call on a Saturday. Oh, shit. It's like, God damn. I say, hello? Hey, this is Jim Reynolds over at, uh, you know, in the neighborhood. Just let you know, your contract's up for renewal on Monday. We're not going to pick it up, but we really appreciate you. And one thing you talk to me is like, you never let them see you fall. I was like, all right, man, keep it up. All right, be easy. <laughs> well, who's that? Oh, I just got, I'm, I did not, they didn't pick up my option for the <laughs> CBS show. You think it's because of that? Absolutely. <laughs> Damn. No, I, listen, here's the thing. I think, Damn. I think he later got in trouble because he fired like a lot of black people. Yeah. Nah. But I think it was, they wanted someone with kids in the room for their personal stories mm -hmm. so he got rid of me the other like two three other writers and brought a woman in who had like a family to get her ideas about family pitches which is cool mm. it's like, so then it really wasn't about the outburst yeah you know I, you know it could you know who knew i don't think it helped well i mean it, <laughs> it, it, it definitely it, didn't it, help it, you were the first i f i feel like that wasn't like a one of one situation it feels like that well, happens a lot you know one more thing maybe <laughs> one time he said Sydney, have you watched all the episodes i said yeah I watched everyone before I took the interview. He said, okay. And I sat in my office, and Hank was in there. And Hank said, you good? I said, he just asked me, did I watch all the episodes? Like, I ain't, yeah, I watched all the episodes. I said, he said, let it go. I said, I'll be right back. So I knock on the door on the showrunner. Come on in. Big ass office. I said, how you doing, Jim? He said, what's up? I said, earlier today, you asked me, did I watch all the episodes? I said, but I watched every episode twice before I did the interview. So is it something I'm doing wrong? You can point me out in the right direction. Do I need to rewatch them or anything like that? He was like, no, no. I just wanted to know. Some of your pitches, maybe just for me, if you watch the episode 11, you see. I said, no worries. I'll go back and watch them. That way I'm not repitching some of the same things. But I just wanted to clarify. Mm. He was like, I appreciate that. Yeah, Closed the door. And then my boy was like, don't listen to him. What? You big black man just walked in the room and was like, can I talk to you for a second? <laughs> he's like, of course he's going to be like, yeah, yeah, no worries. He was like, you, did you close the door behind you? I was like, absolutely. It's a private conversation. He was like, I think you could have handled it better. I was like, I think I did. I, I didn't see anything wrong with that. But I mean, you know, the whole black thing. Yeah, it's, like, yeah. <laughs> it's, all, it's always that. It's always that. It doesn't matter how you do it, when you do it. There's always that. It's just like Bluetooth. It doesn't matter when you take it, how you take it, where you at when you take it. It doesn't matter because you will always be ready with Blue Chew, okay? Because Blue Chew what? is the is it, it delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in a chewable tablet. So I guess it does matter how you take it because you're going to be chewing it. But when you take it, it doesn't matter. You want to take it 30 minutes before, two hours before, four hours before. It doesn't matter. You're always going to be ready for a good time, okay? And the process is simple. All you do is you go to BlueChew.com, you sign up, you consult with one of the licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, they'll ship your order out to your front door. You don't have to go anywhere for it. You don't have to go to the mail. Any, none, none of that. You don't have to go to any doctor's office and have any awkward conversations sitting in any waiting rooms. You don't have to be at the pharmacy and all of that. It ships directly to your front door. And like I said, all of this is done on lines. Blue Chews tablets yeah, are made too. in the USA, and they are prepared and shipped directly to your front door in a discreet package, so you don't have to worry about anybody in your neighborhood or in your apartment complex, even if you stay in one with a close friend and you never invite each other over each other's houses, worrying about what you got going on, okay? Uh, and you know how we do. We've been rocking with Blue Chew for two and a half, probably three years now at this point, right, Pat? Uh -huh. Yeah. At least three years in, at this point right now. Uh, we always hook you up, okay? We're hooking you up with a free month, and nothing has changed with that, okay? All you got to do is pay $5 for shipping. All right, so go to BlueChew.com. Use the promo code DIYS to receive your first month for free. You heard right. Absolutely free. Absolutely free. And ladies... Uh, this is a great thing to suggest to your guy. You don't necessarily need it, but you never know what the possibilities could be. That's why me and Pat started it. We just wanted to see what could happen. And listen, you, you will not be disappointed, fellas. You, you should, you should, you should. It's just, it's just a lot of fun. Okay, Blue so, Chew, go right now. <laughs> 
Go to Bluetooth.com. <laughs> Bluetooth.com. Use the promo code DIYS and receive your first month for free. All you have to do is pay $5 for shipping. <laughs> Just go. Hey, listen. <laughs> hey, dog. You got to let me know we're going into commercial. That was, that that was, was, that was, I've that was never abrupt. seen a abrupt segue. It's like a date. Abrupt. Like, what's your favorite color? Why is your dick out? I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that would have been fitting for her. From the I was like, oh, he's not talking. Oh, he, oh, it's a commercial. And I'm experienced enough to know, experienced enough to know to shut the fuck up. But definitely was like jarring. <laughs> Same time I said jarring. I was jarring. <laughs> I looked at Pat. He's like, he does this. Oh, okay. All it's right. usually, usually smooth. Yeah. He was reading it fast. I was like, the line right what? there. I'm looking at the time. I'm thinking that we end at 3.30. I was like, shit, I got to get this out. And I forget we go almost to like 4. But I'm like, I got to oh. get this out. Because we only had one ad today. But I wanted to make sure oh, I got that it out. Oh, so. gay, hey, Blue Chews. He did his thing. Oh, We're going to get that ad out, my boy. Okay. We're going to get that ad out. Shout out to Blue Chew. Speaking yeah. of condoms, I think. <laughs> right? Who wears those? I'm getting my vasectomy June. I mean, uh, January 4th, my boy. You ever been slapped on the chest for something like that? Right? Hey, no kids for me, bye. I'm getting no, my no kids for me, bye. I'm getting the snip. Where we at with it? Uh, uh, you been show me your daughter's appointment? Yeah, my boy. Like they knew, look like, at that. Look you show me a picture of daughter's one like, like it's kids. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look, look, I go, look, 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 ain't that appointment cute? Ain't that appointment cute? It's, yes, it's just the calendar. Yes, sir. I can pull it up in the app, too. I got it on the KP app, bro. Uh, Hold on, You're going to be there See? early. You're going to get your vasectomy like this. Take them away. Yeah. They said I could drive myself, but they, they suggested you don't have somebody bring me or, you know, catch a car service or something like that. But you, you drive can't, yourself. You, just, you can't drive? You can but uh, it's outpatient you. surgery, so you can leave the same day. You can drive yourself. They just going to actually stay a little bit longer on the recovery. Then you just leave it right afterwards. If you're not driving, then you can leave right afterwards. Because working the pedals, I guess that would be kind of hard. Yeah, it's, it's all good. liability. One person yeah. can have some accident somewhere. Freshly like snipped. Wednesday, January 4th, 9 a.m. Off easy lane. What's the go. What's the after? She's here. She's here. Are you like uh, just like... like 48 hours, I'm, I'm supposed to take it easy, keep my legs elevated, uh, ice the balls, and then after they that... They swell? Huh? Does it... Like, I'm like, sure it does it hurt? Yeah, because they make, it, they, make it, they make an incision... On both sides of your scrotum, they go in, they snip the lines, whoop, 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 then they, then they uh, right. clip them so they don't try to grow back. And um, you ice that for a little bit. So you have a foreign object in you because they, they, they snip and then they put the, the clip on there. Uh, so that, oh, they yeah, leave that, the clip in. Yeah. So the, they don't like, just tie it? No, they, 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 they it's no, like, like they if this is the, it could heal itself. How the fuck yeah. you know? You got one too? <laughs> he just knows a lot of shit. <laughs> Listen, oh shit, we got to talk about this right after this, Ken. Don't let me forget. Uh, so, like, if this is it right here, look. They would they would cut this part off right here, and then cinch the ends, and then they they would clip it too, so it doesn't try to connect back. Um, and then you have to go back in and get the the little clips off. Uh, they check they check everything, and then like a couple weeks after that, they check your. Wait, you got to go back to get the clips out. Yeah, do they have to cut you again? <clears throat> they probably just go in the same spot. Ooh. Same spot. Are so you gonna be a G? And get no numbing cream, or you gonna numb your shit? I ain't never got no numbing cream. Yeah, when yeah. I had my baby, I didn't get, I didn't get. Uh, why would you? Wait, what? Why would you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what? <laughs> when would, when <laughs> would one? When would one need <laughs> numbing cream? I didn't get a shot of my he baby. Had a, he had a booty baby. <laughs> <laughs> he had a booty baby at, at Yo, ten years old. <laughs> so I was talking to Cam about like yesterday. I I, I broke a tooth, and what I immediately. Up? Bro, you, you're too old to be a, breaking tooths. Bro, it was something that was already loose. I could tell, and it was just, it chipped okay. on the inside. Cause I, I be, I'm when I used to floss, I used to feel it moving. I feel like it was food, but it was that tooth, and then a, just a piece of it just fell off. That thing. You thought like, it was food and didn't do anything about it, man. Oh, yeah. it was tooth. <laughs> I was flossing. I, I couldn't do anything about it. I get to that out. later. <laughs> I get to that later. And that tooth the next day was like. I need you to pull. <laughs> it's been two weeks. I was that. It was way longer than that. <laughs> um, the other two just looking at a dead body. I don't know when he come go get Larry, but Larry been dead for about two weeks. Why is he just hanging there? The nigga thinks it's food. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, fuck what we got. The point is, we got the front like, <laughs> they got roses by your tongue <laughs> on the side of a highway. Oh, when he, when little he, candles. Yeah, when he come get that tooth, you know, uh, any day now. <laughs> anyway, we were talking about we were talking about dentists, and Cam told me that barbers used to be dentists. That's why there's still no like 
dentist insurance specifically for dentists because at first they thought that dentistry was just cosmetic. Cosmetic. It was just a thing for show. They didn't think it was related to your health. Because hmm. barbers used to pull your teeth. You would go there and they would get pliers and yank your fucking teeth in off. In the same, yeah, in the same session same as a haircut. Same, yeah, but is this be. biblical yeah. days? No, this is like 1800s. Oh, biblical days. So you <laughs> could get both at once, or you had to do one or the other. <laughs> no, if you will say, say you just got your shave, like, hey, this tooth's been bothering me. I'll take a look. Oh, that needs to be taken out. No cream or nothing. No, they probably give you a shot of whiskey or something. Wow, that sounds real barbaric. And, like, sounds manly. That's where barber Black comes man. from. Barbarism, barbaric. That's where the word comes Shut from. Shut up! Yeah. Can't Wait. be knowing shit, bro. Wait, what was first? Barber? Probably barbaric. Barbaric. So, bar- barbaric. Shave and a two fix. Barbers or barber surgeons took on the role of dentists in addition to the many other skills due to their expertise with sharp instruments and dexterity. So what else would a barber do that was barbaric besides the tooth stuff? I mean, the fact that they were, I mean, they would be doctors, too. And, like, towns that didn't have doctors, they would be the doctor. The dude is shake me up, going to give me doctors if I have something. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Can I get a lineup and a, a BBL? <laughs> how, how did Billy die in heart surgery? Well, the barber opened his chest with some clippers and didn't that know how to back up. That makes sense. Oh, that's how we lost <laughs> <laughs> that's so fucking crazy, bro. The shit that they used to just do—that's wild. <laughs> the is really, they was really what? lazy. They as was putting cocaine and Coca Cola. Mm-hmm. They were selling bitches that Kellogg's would kill your horniness. <laughs> Barber <laughs> is the root word of barbaric. That's insane. It makes sense. You've been saying barbaric. Barbaric has barber in it. You just say it weird. Yeah, that's barbaric. Crazy. That's weird. They and say they won't get Cam as an actual guest on the show. We do need wow, to do that. Because Cam, Cam don't have the Cam Cam on all the time. He just has it on when he has something to say. You got to go on one of them shows where like, you phone a friend, but you don't never phone a friend because you know all the information. <laughs> oh, and then Your the last just question you just... Is he going to call me? Nah, you just he, call somebody and hello? tell them you're about to win? Hello? Hello? What <laughs> barbers actually used to do besides cut hair? What is poor teeth? <laughs> <laughs> Barbaric. Barbaric. <laughs> How barbaric. That's crazy as <laughs> shit. That blew my mind, bro. I, I had never heard that before today. That's actually really, really, really interesting. I'm glad um, we moved past that. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't like that from the snipping. No. I feel like you were uncomfortable. You got to go back the... in there. What? Mm-hmm. This, that snipping thing is a whole two-week process. Uh, all because he want to leave it in. You would never do it? Huh? You'd never do it? Why? Uh, no, to... I don't have any kids. He has kids. I'm going to leave it in until I get one. Oops. <laughs> Oops. Oops. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Just, Let me ask you this. Just kidding, exes you, who might be watching. Are you, are you at that point financially where you would just leave it in? This, I, uh, <laughs> not financially, but also like humbly, time-wise. Humbly, I'm not nervous <laughs> if, if she gets pregnant. Humbly. But I'm do not you want to do that? I would prefer... Was my like a woman I'm building with? No, I mean, I mean but. the kid period, like having a kid period. Oh yeah, I want once a kid. Oh, yeah, yeah. How many kids do you see have had? Three. So I need to go get the surgery. Like, goddamn, there's seven of them niggas in there. <laughs> 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 Let me go down to this barber real quick. <laughs> I say like three, two or three. Yeah, two or three. You've been able to work by coastal on a lot of different projects. Uh, but Texas is where your heart is. I mm. feel like uh, you get to a point. Is that going to be home? Are you going to get like? like I, I was just talking to Tone Bill yesterday. He some property out there. Yeah, yeah. He bought. He bought a. He bought a farm uh, in Austin. Yeah. yeah. This nigga bought a whole farm. Well, it's like this. Zillow is way better out there. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's reasonable. It's just, <laughs> I just go when I'm in the south. I just go on Zillow just to see. Mm-hmm. That's <laughs> like How a date now. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, swipe. I probably will. It's his thing, dog. It's like it's just me. Well, it's just me and my mom now. Mm-hmm. That choke up wasn't for this conversation. I just really need some water. All of a sudden, damn. Oh, yeah, you want me to go you? get They're somebody? gonna be like, oh my god, he getting emotional. I promise it's not. But it's just me and her now, and like you know, a couple you know her family members. So it's like, it's like being out there is like a representation of like checking on her and things like that. Mm-hmm. But like my personality is more like Texas. It's yeah. like you know the homes out here. It's like all right, cool. You know what I mean? They want a million dollars mm-hmm. to live in an area that's like ooh. You know, and they want a few more million to live in a different area. And you just go back home <coughs> and look at a house for like five, six hundred thousand. Yeah. And you got so much property. Yes. Right? And this gated community or this this spot, and it's like that make more sense to me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For and sure. then maybe just have something small out here, because I I just you know, 
I like cooking, barbecuing, all that mm-hmm. shit back home is just fun. And it's fun out here too, but. I see you with a big ass pickup truck. Like oh, a, a I want a truck so bad, but yeah. they don't have them. Out here, it don't make no sense. It don't. The gas yeah. and like, the trucks. traffic and all People that. People don't be shit. having yeah. yards like that. That's out true. Here. Yeah. yeah. Like nobody, you wake up, nobody cutting grass out here. Yeah, it's that's like, very true. I can see you hauling some shit too. Well, Do you nah. tailgate? No, you no, no. Would you ever tailgate? Do you have, was that ever a thing for you? Like going and setting up grill at the that's football a bunch. game? No, no, no. I would do that for like people, my homies. Okay. It was like maybe five of us. I would, I've never tailgated before. Yeah. That oh, would really? be, yeah, that'd be kind Ain't of Ain't that fun. huge in uh, Texas? I guess, but go to the game. I think that's so silly. <laughs> go to the fucking game. Well, I thought I thought you could my, tailgate before the like game my and then cousin go. Did that shit. <laughs> You can literally tailgate, but they're not going to the game. They 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 watching their TV in the parking lot. I've only tailgated yeah. before the game and then gone to the game. No, I've not listened. I've gone to a game and saw a tailgate. Like, you want a sandwich? Yeah, that's fine. You want to sit out here? I have tickets. <laughs> <laughs> it's like saying, it's not too, hey, do you want to? You're such a petty nigga, bro. Man. Hey, we're not tickets? even trying. That's just really Not even I'm going. I love it, though. I, I have like, tickets. Do I want to sit here and watch the game with you in the parking lot? And hear the ins- no, nigga. <laughs> that that is How much you pay for these meats? Because you gonna cook for like five hours. <laughs> so you pay what two fifty? Yeah. And that could have got you a ticket at the Cowboy game for thirty dollars. They call standing seats, mm. where you could literally stand up the whole time at mm-hmm. a booth, but you watch the big jumbo screen, right? And you watch the whole game, so you hear, but you don't see it. That's thirty dollars. Yeah. That's but, better but than with being. the tailgate, you got your own. That's way you got worse. Your own food. That sounds awful. You got your own liquor. You could be a lot. You of know what you don't have... got? The game. They bring they bring TVs with them, baby. You'd rather standing seats than be outside and not watch the game. But you, it's the same thing. Just the bigger. But you can't even sit down. You could at least sit down in your tailgate. I'd rather be at home. I was gonna no. say I'd I, choose right. home over a tailgate. I'm like that right. meme. Is like if you see me, like it was a meme. Like if you see me outside, no, I don't want to be there. <laughs> That's not my personality. So if you see me somewhere, I don't. That's why I said he never came over. No, I be. I, I be trying to like, yo, come on over real quick. He like, oh. but I'm at home. I'm like, nigga, you're seven hours away. <laughs> but I'm at home. I'm at home. But dear. I'm in Unit C. Meet me by the pool. Meet me by the pool. I'm Unit D. Meet me by the pool. <laughs> Meet me by the pool. Is that really where y'all met? Yeah, yes. that's funny. Is like, that hey, like on one I of the talk East Gates? You. And he was like, what's up, man? I ain't about to get a divorce. So you serious? Come on. And we talk like old oh, men. Yeah. Oh, y'all would stay at the pool. No, we no, talk. We walk, we walk to like across the street. You know, you get a lot off. Not, we, we get a lot off in that car. You know, yeah, yeah. he's playing chess. Yeah. <laughs> Come back. Then, all right, back him up at the pool. Go back to my little situation. <laughs> I think it never came up. And that was another thing. Because it was that awkwardness that I never wanted to like invite myself over. I didn't want you to be with that. <laughs> she was not the friendliest. James, like, does she not want me here? <laughs> I was like, I don't know, man. Sorry, it's what I'm married. Yeah. She's not the friend. I never want to be that person. Like, I feel like I, feel like I should go. Dog. I like, Jayla, Jayla, I, I said hello. Now, I know I said hello. <laughs> was she mean? <laughs> you know. She I, just wasn't the she, friendliest. She, she was probably the, better, the friendliest person. You feel me? Nah. Yeah. yeah. At all. Yeah, me. It was crazy. Like, Fran used to not be the friendliest person. Because huh. she just didn't know my friend. So, yeah. like, and she's she's a stay-to-yourself your, type of person. It's not like she doesn't want to be friendly. If she just mm-hmm. don't know you, she just, she observes first. Yeah. I'm like that with, like, people. If I don't know you, cool. Like, new comics, that's what's up. Like, they come to you, hey, that's what's up. Maybe, I got, like, 10 seconds. Yeah. Otherwise, I'll get, like, antsy. Like, what are we doing? Yeah. I, have all, I, have, I have all my friends. <laughs> right. Or, like, <laughs> uh, like, my friends, uh, wives, or girlfriends, I've, I got in trouble for years. No. Uh-huh. For like not speaking, yes, mm-hmm. same. for years. But Listen. it's like Aaron Edwards' ex-wife came. She checked me. You don't even follow me on Instagram, and I was like, "Why would I do that?" I thought that was inappropriate. <laughs> and she was like, "What you mean?" I said, "I know you a person." <laughs> like that's always person. my theory. I, said, I'm like, I don't. People are like you don't talk to me. I talk to your husband, right? <laughs> oh, every time I talk to that nigga, just I'm talking to you too. <laughs> 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 and it's, to me, hey, it's, it's respectful. Listen, I, I think the same thing. Hey, listen, I, I just called, I, I'm trying to FaceTime for her, but her phone's probably connected to my car. So I'm sitting here with Sydney. He's on the show. And uh, she was like, oh, I should invite Sydney to the to the podcast. She's like, no, nah, that's okay. Because that nigga be acting like he can't talk to me unless, <laughs> unless you there. That's See? exactly what I said. And you know what it is? That is such you a... You get weird a, as hell when Tahir's not around. And that should be so much up. Yeah. I trust Sydney. I do, right. I do, I, I'm the same thing. <laughs> yeah, it's I'm like, the same thing. Yeah, I was trying okay, to tell man, her one, one time she came up to me. Yeah. It was at the roast. Yeah. The roast was here. And if Aaron came up to me, she said, how you doing? And I got like, thinking I just traveled and Fran be changing her hair. Yeah, she do. A lot. And I said, hey, how you doing? <laughs> and she was like, so you're not going to speak to me? I was like, hey. 
<laughs> I'm Tahir's wife. I said, oh, well, that's why I don't talk to you. <laughs> and she said, what? I said, oh, no, it's not even a mean thing to me. <laughs> that's why I don't talk to and you. And I was so honest, like, oh, no. No, it was so serious. I was supposed to say, like, oh, no, so you understand I'm not even being mean. It's a, it's a, oh, it's, I, it's a, oh, my dad was 78, like that. dog. Yeah. So it's, it's a, like, you don't never go to a man house, wife not there. You talk to a yeah. man, wife is like, it could be that. No, it's 2022, but I'm still on some, like, cordial. Yeah. Right. And, like, if a dude was trying to talk to you, that wasn't him, that's when I step in and start talking. Like, hey, bro, it's my partner. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. Yeah. But I don't really, I'm not the friendliest because. I met Tangerine and and, Cle- and, and and CT separately. But when I reach out to to Tangerine, it's always on the thread with CT. And I have both their numbers, and, and, and Tangerine hit me on a solo tip on, like, right. yo, I want you on the show, whatever, whatever. But when I respond or I'm, I'm inviting them out to our Tuesday night or something, it's both of them. And that's just that's, that's just a respect thing. So to hear really that, it. it's what's up to hear what's up, man. How y'all doing? Yeah. But, you know what I mean? I'm never right. going to be somewhere and see my partner, girl, and make a V-line like one second. Yeah. How you doing? It's right. like, nah. Mm-hmm. Because just, I, I yeah. feel like it's better to be weird to the, the, the woman than be, like, overly... Friendly and be weird to the the your yeah. homie, you know, because then if that if that relationship is weird, then it's like yeah. oh that's that's way weirder than just being like hey how you doing? I know I can it's get like, angry. You feel me? So, so, I can only imagine. Right? Where's therapy going? <laughs> I know I get angry. I don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> so I always I don't speak Spanish. I don't, I don't, I know. <laughs> You treat me like you treat all these white kids in here. <laughs> I don't know it. Castillo is not even my real name. I'm Smith, goddammit. Dog. Sydney Smith. Dog. She gave me a zero. <laughs> Damn, you didn't even get a percent? <laughs> Dog, one time, this is my fault, but I was, like, I, was being, I was being petty. We had a project due, and you're supposed to like single them out, bring some Mexican heritage, like either make some flan or know something about some Spanish culture and bring Just it like- in. I was flying the first. And bring it in, right? Uh I forgot. And I could have just took my L. I said, fuck it. (laughs) This is why you got the zero. I got a poster board. It's a true story. I got a poster board. I went outside and grabbed some grass. No. Dog on my my life, bro. And and some water. And I made mud. And I put it down. I was making mud, right? I put it right here. And I took up some paper. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. And I just, like, sprinkled it. Just some bullshit. And, you know, when mud get hard on a poster board, what it do? It crumble up. And so I asked, she goes, Castillo, tu listo? I was like, yeah, I'm ready. Right? I brought this poster board. Dirt is falling off the poster board. And the class is going like this. I said, uh, this is Mexico before, after, after tragedy hit. I said, an earthquake came and shook Mexico, killing everyone. <laughs> <laughs> she said, zero! Zero, Castillo! You can you zero! Even, you even checked to see if there was an earthquake? I didn't. I was going to flunk the class. So hey, it, at least you made it non-racial. Yeah, there's no such thing as an F plus and an F minus. Right. You feel me? So I was like, I'm already going to fail this course. But Let's you do know fun. that there's a difference between uh, F, which is what, 60% and zero. D, D is 60. <laughs> and then F is oh, yeah. In my household, <laughs> if you don't get a B, you was in trouble. And I was already in the Damn. F range. So I was like, well, I'm just going to take the L on this one. You said that was a destroyed Mexico? Yeah, I said this is right before Mexico was destroyed. What was the paper? Uh, debris. <laughs> <laughs> It was debris that had flown over the city. <laughs> <laughs> that lady was so mad, that. dog. Bro. That lady was so mad, she was screaming zero and get out of my class. I mean, that, that adds up. <laughs> Bro, I would have hated up. this nigga as a stu- Actually, no, we probably would have got together long, great as, as teachers too. But I know you would have gave them other teachers hell. I would have been laughing in the, in the, in the yeah. teachers' meetings. I would have <laughs> the faculty meetings. And then... And then he put some dirt on the paper. I said, he went, hold on, hold on, bitch. Yeah. I, I would have enjoyed that, actually. Because you could have also just been like, I didn't do it. Yeah. You could have. At least you gave him a show. But I knew she would be angry. Oh, you I did it too. that way. Oh. Because you, you only talk to me in Spanish. So you make me angry enough where I'm going to flunk this class. <laughs> so I'm going to go out with a laugh. Wait, but she did say zero in English. Zero. Zero. Cero. 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 Cero Castillo. That's what I said. Cero Castillo. Game bro. Cero. 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 <laughs> she was so mad. She passed away, unfortunately. Like maybe 10 years later. Oh, I never man. got to, you know, solve that. Like, hey, lady, 
I didn't know the fucking language. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You didn't even pick it up o- over the year? I learned it in restaurants. It was so hard there. I had to take it again, and I passed it the next year. Mm-hmm. And Miss Stockton helped me. Because Wait, she what spoke restaurants English? were you learning in? Because they speak faster in restaurants. Because usually they're speaking but to people. But broken, if you go right? into the kitchen, here's uh-huh. real talk. You go into the kitchen, I explain, yo, como estas? I was like, solamente habla me en español, so escucha. Right? So only speak to me in Spanish so I can learn. Because mm. at first, they'd be like, maricón. I'd be like, what's up? I used to think it was American. Uh-huh. Right? Maricón does not mean American. What does it mean? It's a word you're not supposed to say now. Like, like nigga? Mean? Nah. Oh, okay. Like, you're like an insult. And okay. so I didn't know. So then they, I came back. I said, y'all been fucking lying to me. They all started <laughs> laughing. But they would only talk to me in Spanish. My cleaning lady for like eight, nine years, she don't speak English. Mm-hmm. So it's like, only talk to me in Spanish. Like, don't even try to help. But how, you do you, pick it up. how do you get across what you need to? You, you just pick it up. It's like, if you watch, <laughs> it sounds dumb too. But if you watch Spanish TV... Over and over again, you're going to learn it because that's why I think it's a myth. I be watching narcos all the time. No, that's trying not, to, nah, trying to but you gotta look at Spanish. the low budget where you know they shot it on a camera phone and it's on like on Spanish TV. Why? It's just you just learn it. They're like, Papi, no, es tu pelo es nomás, es un cuando. And you like, you just learn it. You just kind of what like, is that? What My face is that Papi, no hair no more. Oh, but so. why? He <laughs> 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 been personal to you. <laughs> But I learned it back there, yeah. <laughs> it helped with women, though, because women be on dates and be like, so, like, say something. Como estas? Está bien. Oh, that voice got deep. The voice got deep. I used to lie. Where are you from? I'm like, Santo Domingo, but we moved to Teas. <laughs> what did you just say? Where are you from? <laughs> Santo Domingo, but we moved to Teas. Where is Teas? Texas. <laughs> Teas. I know, man. I didn't know. I didn't know he was in town. So hippie hit us was like, yo, Sydney says, man, I'm like, this motherfucker's in town? I came in Saturday. You yeah. don't never, like, hit, I, I just got to start hanging with James, huh? Because that's the only person you call. No, I be trying to get your own shit, and you don't. Uh, 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 uh. No, it's not true. You know I deal with anxiety, but like, I be, I be. I that be, ain't got shit to do with you until <laughs> my phone he call. He threw that in there. <laughs> the nigga, Come on, man. You know the truth? You know the truth? Well, the last two times you asked me, uh-huh. we was writing Churchy. Mm-hmm. So literally, I was like, you know, I take it seriously, so I was like, work from like till like eight. Mm-hmm. So like, I had a writer's assistant over there. So past two time, I'm like, damn, I can't leave. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's really just that okay. I would always come down here. I, I love get y'all. It. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. get it. I just, you know, I don't. We, it, we, you get to a certain level, and you're very particular about the people that you want to hang no, with. No, 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 no. I'm not saying. That. I'm not saying. That. I'm saying oh. like, I, I, I am particular about the people I want to spend time yeah, with. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. Like-minded individuals, people I can also learn from and grow from. So yeah. like, you know, when I hit you up, it's like, nigga, I miss you. And also, yeah. what you doing? What you working on? Update yeah. me. You know what I mean? So because we don't get a chance to like. A lot of times, especially comics, we see each other in passing. Mm. And I just hate that, especially for like people I really consider friends. I be really wanting to check in. So when I called Tone oh, randomly, I just it was just that. random, out of the blue. Like, hey, man, what you doing? I love you. I miss you. What, what you got going on? When I first started having like panic attacks, whatever, and I didn't know what the fuck was going on, I remember doing Zooming with the homies. And oh, I yeah. just got some medicine for it. And I remember telling he's like, you good? And I remember like literally having a panic attack. I didn't know I control them at first. I'm on the Zoom. <laughs> I think I just closed the, I closed the laptop or something. <laughs> I text him, hey, buddy, I'm having a panic attack right now. <laughs> In the middle of the show? Yeah, uh, yeah middle of the show. I said, I love you. Uh, I don't want to make this awkward. <laughs> Took some medicines, probably going to knock me out. <laughs> he was like, you okay? Uh, we going to figure it out together. <laughs> I didn't know where they was coming from. So, so the, it was just like mid said somebody was talking, he was like, whoop. <laughs> It was just like I could feel it, and when they come on like that, my blood pressure shoot up, and so I start Shit. sweating, think I'm about to faint. And I was like, at the time, I didn't know what it was about. I was like, uh-huh. man, what was said on this thing that made me even feel like this? You think it was triggered? I found out later, like I'm able to like do much better now. Uh-huh. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And through therapy and all that shit. Niggas but, was talking about haircuts. It was four of us talking about haircuts, and he was there like he just he started start doing this, and then they could close the laptop. And I was like, wait, it's, man, it's you alright, buddy? It's over to you. <laughs> my doctor Signing says. Out. My doctor says. My, my cup's full. <laughs> <laughs> my cup's full. <laughs> it overflowing. Hey, dog. My cup's full. <laughs> that is his calling call now. People say it in the comments all the hey. time. He say it on stage. <laughs> I be talking about that shit on stage now, dog, where I talk about, like, mental health and, like, depression. Like, yeah. I was depressed into that. Hey, my new shit, like. It's airing it out. Dog. It feels so good. Dog, I say, right now, I say, just this line get me hyped because I'm, like, being so honest, dog. I was like, I was, my brother died May 30th, 2017. I said I was de- very depressed. I said I didn't know because I'd, I'd never been depressed like that before. Mm. I said normally when people are depressed, it's not something physical you could see. Some people do drinking, some people smoke. You know what I mean? I got engaged. <laughs> That's the joke. Damn. That's how it starts. So it's like, 
But I'm open up about that shit. Yes. I couldn't heal up with my brother because I was married and nigga I wasn't connected with. <laughs> but now I'm like speaking and people be like, they more like, people thought it was funny. Yeah. But now it's like they come up they to me on some like, dog, like, mm-hmm. I go through that shit too. Black men be like, dog, I be going through that. Da, da, da. Mm-hmm. Or they say, you dark. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm just telling my story, mama. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You mm-hmm. dark? Yeah, you dark. You can't, you can't heal from something by trying to cover it up with someone else. Yeah. If you haven't gone through that grieving process, and the grieving is weird because you'll be completely fine, and then that shit just hit you like a wave, and then you trying to deal with it, but you still got other shit to do, so you try to compartmentalize it. I'm going I'm to cry later when I get home. Mm-hmm. Nigga, nah. Cry now. That grief ain't, that Go grief ain't finna put on no back burner. That nigga, mm-hmm. he riding shotgun. Duh, I feel like <laughs> I've been dealing with grief so much, like my partner back home make fun of me. Like, I don't. I feel emotion, like I can mm-hmm. get sad, like I have empathy for people. Right. But since it'll never be pain like I've experienced before, I'm never like that down about something. Mm. And, and if somebody goes through something, I'm the most honest with them. Mm. Like my partner was like, my his wife, his wife's mom probably from the past. You know, mm. I was like, oh well, look, dog, it's gonna be hard. And shit you could do, she's gonna be sad for about two and a half years. She need therapy. You need to pray on how you could really be there for her. And it's gonna be time she's gonna break down. Ain't got nothing to do with you. It's gonna be a lot of stress on you. But ain't shit you really do about it. Mm-hmm. He was like, I have her I write a mama a note right now while she alive or everything she appreciate about her. All right, I'm gonna hit you. The game finna come on. <laughs> but it's like it's, that was amazing until your dismount, nigga. <laughs> but it's like it's so it's, ah, so, but it's so real though. Yeah, so real. <laughs> Kev lost his brother. I was like, damn, I know what he's gonna go through. Mm-hmm. Like very sad for him. It's like it's mm-hmm. nothing really you could tell somebody. It's nothing you can do. It's like you know, take your time, make sure you're good, and you know, mm-hmm. emoticons, strength signal. I ain't gonna talk to you a lot because you yeah. don't really want to talk a lot. And it is what it is. And then eventually. It'll hit him where he like, I can move better. Yeah. But trying to force like advice is silly. It's yeah. like n- nothing you're gonna say. You know, it's no book in the Bible. It's gonna make me feel good right now. And I yeah. get the messages. I get it. But you gonna just cry, nigga. That's my advice. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a human thing to mourn the loss of someone. And and the reality is is that we're always gonna feel like that person left too soon. Yeah. Your dad was 78. Yeah. But you like, he could have made it to 80. He could have made it to 85. That's something in therapy. I yeah. said, I feel like God taking my family. Mm-hmm. And I had to really realize, damn, my dad died at 78. Right. He, he lived mm-hmm. a good life. So it's like, job well done. Yeah, my like, dad died at 45. Exactly, dog. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, so you you got so much more time. And not saying that that makes it better or okay. It's a perspective. Thing, but it's, just, right. it's a perspective that help anxiety. thing. Yeah. Because for a minute, I didn't <clears> see that. I was like, he picking off people in my family. Mom got cancer twice. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm next, probably. Like, mm-hmm. so it was just a bunch of angriness. Yeah. So, you know I mean, I stay at home because, like, at the time, I'm going through shit and don't know how to deal with it. Yeah. So then it's like, oh, Sydney, weird. All right. All right. No, <laughs> uh, all right. Just, just don't let me hear you. <laughs> don't let me hear you. <laughs> it's not nothing to do with you, dog. Yeah. Right. Well, listen, man, we got to almost get ready. Oh, we got to end on something positive. So anyway, no, no, man, no, no, I'll be healing. I don't be panicking no more, and I'm a nice-ass nigga. <laughs> so we just don't want to lie? We don't want to tell them the truth? I occasionally I don't like people. <laughs> <laughs> but not these brothers. <laughs> Make sure you go to Blue Chew because Blue Chew has all your fun. <laughs> Ain't paying us twice. Okay, man. Right. <laughs> what you got coming down the pipeline, man? You 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 wrote on uh uh Bomani, Bomani's Bomani show. Well, uh, first day of work is November twenty eighth, so we do that this month till April. Mm-hmm. Uh I'm mm, I tell you, I'm 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 gonna shoot my special next year. Yeah. Nice. yeah, so I'm in the process. Let of like, me know when and where I'm pulling up, bro. Yeah, I'm trying to get it like in the process of trying to get it funded. Okay, so it's like two great meetings and people are like, yeah, we with it. Okay, so we're just trying to see right now in that little process. But that's my goal: shoot a documentary great, man. of like nice. my life the past five years mm-hmm. and then bookend it with like some stand up. That's you know, dope. You know what I mean? So people get to really know like why I am the way I am. Yeah. Yeah. I like it, man. Yeah, I'm proud of you, dog. Yeah, you know, I get uncomfortable. I'm like, all right. It's too yeah, good. I <laughs> you know what you like? You like a big ass cat. Take them flowers. Like, you like a cat would be like, oh, yeah, man, fuck with it. And then be like, yeah, all right, now. All right, let me get the fuck out of here. Where's the tree? You need to be out of the bed. Where's the tree? Yeah, there was a tree. Where's the dark hole? Where's the dark hole? Yes. <laughs> I'm not good with compliments. And you're really funny. Thank you. When did you start? Okay, I got to go. <laughs> Thank you for the compliment. I got to go. <laughs> Tony has the best. Not it's not even a joke. He was like, like when people give you compliments, it's like when somebody singing happy birthday to you. You got nowhere to go. You just gotta take every word. You be like, ah, mm-hmm. I wish it wasn't my birthday today. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when did you start? A long time ago. <laughs> what made you start? I just want to. But funny. you know what you could do? You could just sit there and accept it. Sydney, 
I'm you're trying. talented, man. I thank and you. I love you, bro. I love you too. You know what I'm saying? I, I think I, you don't, but I, I cherish our friendship, man. Thank you. See, that was good. That's four seconds. Mm-hmm. But if it get to be 30, <laughs> I'm like, to hear I remember enough, one enough, time. Enough of this compliment I was shit. On the oh, the drunk one? <laughs> the, they like even grab your shoulder to make sure you don't <laughs> oh, walk away. Yeah. Like, Listen. Just touch you, dog. Listen. They touch your beard and do stuff, and you be oh, like, they shouldn't be doing touch that. They shouldn't be touching your beard. They'll be like, oh, is it long? I'm like, huh? Is it long? <laughs> is it long? <laughs> well, listen, man. Uh, let them know where they can find you. Your social handles and all of that, man. Anything you want them to know. Uh, watch Wild Now Season 19. I'll be a couple episodes in that. It comes out in a couple months. I consult on 19 and 20 coming out. Game Theory uh, comes out January. The, the first week in January on HBO and HBO Max. Uh, check out my comedy album we shooting next year. Follow mm-hmm. me on the gram, man. Subscribe to my subscribers because I'm trying to build up my network like my mm-hmm. boys are here. Mm-hmm. Right, my subscriptions are $9.99. Uh, I'm not going back down. Uh, <laughs> I have 18 people, and uh, that's what encouraged me to keep going. Uh, we go. talk about mental health on there we, and then behind the scenes of stand-up and things like that. And uh, on the sets, I like to see behind the scenes. And, uh, man, just really just pray for me. I love y'all. Uh, if you see me in public, no, I don't want to be there. So don't <laughs> – don't. I'm cool with these people. So don't come walk up to me like, Sydney, because I'm like, who are you? <laughs> that but, be a but shirt. I mean that with love. If you see me in public, I, mean I don't want to be there. He's telling in... you honestly so you don't have to put him in a position where he doesn't have to yeah. greet you with love. I take okay? medicine. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> uh, as always, up to him more. I'm Sydney Castillo. <laughs> <laughs> He really has medicine on him, though. You can't be mad. <laughs> you can't be mad at the nigga. You cannot, man. Oh, this nigga just, for those listening, this nigga just shook his pill bottle. He really has medicine. Don't be mad. I'm healing, healing, healing. Who's healing? I'm healing, I'm healing. Yo! As always, I'm to hear more. And we'll see you next week on another Ooh. episode of Damn Internet. You scared me. Bye, guys. That shit is.